just as things were starting to look their best for Star Wars, we get some incredibly sad, sad news today. I know everyone's sad. I know everyone in the chat room literally putting F in chat to pay respects because Acolyte Season 2 is not going to happen. Acolyte Season 1 sucks so much dick that Season 2 had no more dicks to suck. There it is. There it is. Right over here comes up some deadline. The Acolytes canceled. No season two for Disney plus a Star Wars series. Man. <laughs> oh, man. There are more of us. Nope, there isn't. There's definitely more of us than you guys at Disney. Oh, man. Imagine, just stup imagine being so dumb that you made a cringe ass rap song saying something about discourse and sucking dick. Right? Ima imagine being that crazy. And I also posted on Facebook. I just basically put, ha 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 ha. And I had one guy who was extremely woke, of course, says, I like the show. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you did. I'm pretty sure you did. So let's go ahead and read this article right over here. Exclusive. The story of the Acolyte will not continue with Lucasfilm opting not to proceed with a second season of the Star Wars offshoot starring Amanda Stenberg. Sources tell Deadline. Word of the decision comes more than a month after the eight episode first season of the series from creator, director, executive producer, and so ugly that even Harvey Weinstein would not fuck her assistant, Leslie Hetland, wrapped its run at Disney+. Plus. The news is not entirely surprising. The acolyte did okay. No, it did so bad, all right? It did really bad. Even Grace Randolph said it was dog shit. Man, oh man, so right over here, 78% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, but divided the Star Wars fans, which was reflected in its overall viewership. Driven by interest into the venerable franchise, The Acolyte got off a strong start when it launched on June 4th, with two episodes generating 4.8 million views in the first day on the streamer to rank as the biggest series to premiere on Disney Plus this year. A tally rose to 11.1 million viewers globally after five days of streaming. Corroborating Disney's data, the series made its debut on Nielsen's top 10 original charts in the premiere uh, week at number seven. That's not really that great. It is good, but not that good because it literally fell off, right? Right? So young. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Acolyte was so young, man. Man. Rip the acolyte and then climbing to number six the following week. I guarantee you the reason why I climbed to number six is because of they saw Manny Jacinto's hot chiseled ass cheeks, right? But the acolyte could not sustain the momentum, dropping out at the top 10 in week three and staying off before returning to number 10 after the release of the finale with 335 million minutes, believed to be the lowest for a Star Wars series finale. Damn. That means that Book of Boba Fett did better than this, which is crazy. Uh, like fellow global streamers, Netflix and Prime Video, Disney Plus has a high viewership threshold for renewing high-end, high-budget series that cost well over $100 million per season to make. In interviews, Hetland has revealed that she has pitched her ideas for a second season and has shared her hopes for a renewal. Nope. It doesn't matter... It doesn't matter how good the show is, is because he the fact that you have Leslie Headland and you have Amanda Stenberg, those two crazy ass bitches are enough to drive viewers away. But the fact that the writing sucks is now if the writing was really, really good and Leslie Headland and Amanda Stenberg were insufferable as they were it it probably would have gotten renewed right and the thing is that nothing against manny jacinto i think manny jacinto did a, a did a well enough job as he could given the the script and uh, and the writing same thing with the guy who played soul right the, the dude the, the korean dude from uh what's it called again uh, uh squid games right and you have daphne keen and uh you have you have you have, you have decent amount of people in here uh the cast is well diverse of course uh, and this of course this is on purpose and they did sprinkle in some nostalgia things hopefully they can nostalgia bait uh, people who really like the originals like they brought in um uh Kiati mundi they brought in uh darth plagueis and they brought in uh fucking uh yoda right at, at the near the end 
right? Lucasfilm's first and most successful to date Star Wars, uh, sorry, Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian, is carrying on crossing over the features with the upcoming Mandalorian and Grogu movie. We do know that. Ahsoka, the company series preceded the Acolyte, has been renewed for a second season. Ahsoka wasn't bad. It was just sort of boring, right? Um... Uh, Ray Stevenson, I believe that's the guy's name. He died in real life, which is, uh, he is the best part of the series. Like, and the thing is that we do know that Rosario Dawson's massive titties are a big draw for a lot of people. But the thing is that her massive titties were covered up. However, however, uh, the girl from Kick-Ass, um, the, the, the one who played that green chick with the, t with the tails that you get to pull, um, her ass is definitely um, well-received by a lot, including uh, yours truly. Uh, the Acolyte was a mystery thriller that took viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in uh, the final days of the High Republic era. A former Padawan reunites with her ma uh, Jedi Master to investigate a series of crimes, but the Force they confront are more sinister than they have ever anticipated. So basically, a uh, lesbian witch coven, and uh, that's a, they ruined the actual uh, the Force and the, the backstory and the lore for how the force is done they ruined the backstory of anakin that's the reason why people hated it it wasn't because of the diversity okay the the diverse if you remove all the diversity hires and you brought in all white dudes and white and white chicks and you have the same writing it was still would have sucked it doesn't matter if if it was diverse or not it just overall the writing was just really really bad in addition to Stenberg, the cast included Lee Jung Jae, Manny Jacinto, Jody Turner Smith, Daphne Keen, Rebecca Henderson, Charlie Barnett, Dean Charles Chapman, and Carrie Ann Moss, which is she's not really in it. But what makes matters worse, if you guys don't know, today is Manny Jacinto's birthday. Today is Manny Jacinto's birthday, born on August 19th, 1970, uh, 1987. Man, imagine saying, bitch, you are fired. You're fired. Imagine on your birthday getting, no getting news that, yo, you did the best that you could, Manny. You did the best that you could, but we're letting your ass go because the acolytes suck dick. Man, I feel bad for this guy. He is good. He did bring, he, he was a huge thirst trap for a lot of girls, right? And a lot of gay guys, um, you know, there's a lot of gay guys online who like that kind of stuff. Now, he is really buff. Um, he, he, and the thing, the thing is that he is somewhat the best part of the show, but good writing cannot save hot people. It doesn't matter. Like, let's say if, all right, the only person who could possibly save the Star Wars franchise is if they brought in Sydney Sweeney and showed her massive, voluptuous milkers and her, and she also has a nice butt, according to her Instagram. Maybe, possibly could have saved Star Wars Acolyte, but this ain't it, Chief. But rest in peace, not even in peace. Rip Bozo, rest in piss, you won't be missed, especially... Fuck right off Amanda Stenberg. You are the reason why this show sucked. Well, her and a lot of stuff, but that, you know, don't mess with your discourse. Don't fuck with your discourse. That song and that crazy, terrible rap ruined everything. It is what it is, man. You love to see it.